This is just at the point where you can see the it started to brown on the bottom of the pan. It's really clear, clear liquid. That's what you want. And then once it gets to that that stage, uh, what we do is we just pour it through a strainer, and that filters out the rest of the little residue on the top there. This is peak moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Paul, you had said that the, the paleo people ate their fat first. I mean, it's the most treasured part of the animal. And I feel like fat has been so maligned in this culture. It's like fat is you know, bad news. So I want you to give us a little introduction to what's good fat. And you know, show us and talk about all that good stuff. All right. Well, uh, I would say I've lined up a lot of the fats that I use every day mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. my cooking and uh, in dessert making. Uh, I use coconut oil every day. And a lot of times I, I mix these fats during the day, so um, I get all of the, the really good stuff. Uh, we have okay. coconut milk that goes into some of the dessert uh, mm -hmm. recipes and also uh, some of my Thai soup recipes. Mm -hmm. This is coconut cream, I which is heard of this. It's wonderful, and you can just eat it out of the jar if you want. Really, that helps if you're if you're trying to get off the carbs too. Just a little bit of this. It's naturally sweet. It's just coconut pulp. And um, oh, okay. so you can include that in some dessert recipes. It goes mm -hmm. into the uh, the sort of Nora's nut ball truffle oh. recipe. Yeah. Um, oh. Your so, sort of survival food. You yes. Know, it's like when you get hungry. Okay. Yeah, okay. definitely. Um, here we have sesame oil, which is a high heat oil, so you can saute in it. Um, you cannot saute in butter because it will burn, so mm -hmm. we're going to make some ghee while we're here. I have it in the pan. Um, and that's true with olive oil, is that? Olive is oil that you shouldn't saute? heat. No, it'll smoke and burn, so it is recommended you don't actually saute with olive oil. So you just use it? As a finishing oil, you know, oh. on your salads and on your vegetables and things like that, but you really shouldn't heat, heat okay. olive oil. Uh, let's see, we have wonderful butters here. We have uh, pasture butter from grass-fed cows. So that's going to have more of the omega-3s that you were talking yes, about earlier? Yes, uh-huh, yes, definitely. Uh, pastured butter is the key when you're going to the store. Uh, Strauss doesn't say pastured, it's from Marin, but it is pastured butter, oh. European-style butter, and okay. it tastes much better. It tastes like that European kind of good-tasting mm -hmm. butter. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Sierra Nevada butter. It's a cultured uh, cultured butter, which means it's been fermented a little bit. Um, this is ghee that I've already made. And, and I always tell, us, tell folks what's, what's ghee. Ghee is clarified butter, actually, okay. and we'll clarify some on the stove. It takes about 15 minutes, but it separates out um, the casein and um, salts. And so it just turns basically into an oil that then you can saute. Uh, with. It oh. won't burn. So the, oh. the French have been doing this forever. They call it clarified butter. The Indians call it ghee. And, uh, and so what you're saying is bec by the time you take those other solids out, this you really can saute with. Yeah, and I always keep a jar right by the okay. stove. I keep all my oils right by the stove so they're all right there. You know, okay. ready to go into the pan. This is uh, like um, almost homemade sour cream. It's it, um, I made it myself, and you put a little culture in there, and it sort of sits out overnight and turns into this wonderful, thick uh, uh, cream that then you can... Oh, I want a spoon. I want to taste this. Here we go. Oh, spins, it's just... Spins are here. Uh, that you can uh, drop some of that onto your berries. Oh, you know, oh, okay. It's cream fresh. Cream fresh. From the French again. Yeah. Oh. Now, oh. is that heaven? Oh. Yeah, you, oh, that is you put so it, good. I'll, I'll give you some to take good. home. Oh, thank you, you put it in your cream, oh, let oh. it sit overnight, and the next day you have this. I love it. Mm. Okay, I will, yes, creme fraiche is, 
It's like a mild sour cream. Oh. A mild sour cream, but isn't that? Oh, that is good. That's divine. I mean, you know what? If, if you get a little bit hungry, just go in the refrigerator and have a spoonful. I'll say, Polly <laughs> sent me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's nice. Um, and of course, what that says is we can also have, among the fats, good dairy cream. Yes. Organic, preferably yeah. grass-fed, preferably raw, yes. if you can find it. it just raw cream. cream, yes, and cream from grass-fed cows. So yeah. Uh, yeah. there you go. Olives are really high in fat, and they're wonderful to put in different foods or just eat as a snack. So they're, they're very satisfying as, as far as fat goes. We eat at least an avocado a day each. Avocados are huge, uh, good, good food for us. Walnuts, any kind of nuts, but we eat a lot of organic walnuts. Mm -hmm. Do you do you soak them a little with yeah. in salted uh, water? And yeah, you can soak them and then dry them, and then you can use them just, uh, you know, just as just a snacking there. nut or in baking or, or whatever. Because my understanding is yeah. that, that way, the the uh, some of the phytotoxins yeah. you get soaked out. That's right, and I explain mm -hmm. how to do that in my book. It's real easy. Thank you. Uh, now this is the only pork that we buy. Um, it is uh, mm -hmm. organic, grass-fed, humanely raised pork from Chico, uh, California, and it's it's one of the only um, um, organic porks uh, that I know of yeah, in the United it's States. Hard to find. So, yeah, it really is. So it's a little on the expensive side, um, but uh, to be ethical, I really try to. Get pork that's hum humanely raised. You can go on their website. The pigs get to run around, uh, so they're not. It's the way they they're not kept be. in pens. And actually, that is an emphasis in your book. I wanted it to bring that up about yes. finding th f foods that are not only sustainable for us but sustainable for the earth. Yes, you really, um, you're really strong on that. Very strong because since we are still eating animals, I feel like we really have to be kind to them, kind to the environment. It's really important. Um, so I, I really stress that in my book. Um, the other thing about the bacon, if once you cook the bacon, is you can save the fat and cook with the fat. You know, they've been doing this forever. The French are big on pork fat. <laughs> so I will make a true confession. You can have we, a little jar of it we, by the We stove. eat that with our, We eat it with the bacon. We eat the fat with the bacon. It, it tastes so. I mean, after you cook the bacon. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. Eat it all in the same meal. It's wonderful. I roasted a spaghetti squash the other night. I had some leftover bacon fat in the pan, right on, on the spaghetti squash. Because it fat, was delicious. fat makes it taste wonderful. Just. Well, as a friend of mine said, fat is a vehicle of flavor. And uh, so all the additional fats that I'm talking about in my book help, help all the recipes taste better. And when you're trying to get off grains and sugar, what you're looking for is taste. Yes. So the more you can spark up the taste, then you're going to feel really satisfied, like you've eaten something special and you're not deprived. So fat so does it's that. giving you a lot of things, giving you the good taste, yes. right? So it's also your energy source, right? And as you said at the beginning, helping our brain and probably our joints and our heart and all kinds of things yes. um, to work better. Well, we were talking a few minutes ago. I'm going to be 67. I, I now have more energy than I did when I was in my 20s. I, I pretty much dragged myself through my entire life until I started the paleo diet. And all of a sudden, whoa, that's what, that's what feeling alive feels like. I feel great now. Yes. It's incredible. That's amazing. And, and, and a wonderful story that you don't have, I mean, you'd want this for children. You'd want this for infants to oh, be eating yes. this way. Yes. But it's not too late. It's not too late. But don't wait. I mean, if, if you're watching this, don't, don't wait until you're in your 60s like well, me. You're Start now. Don't wait. Do it. <laughs> yeah, Do it. Start now. And because, it, I mean, and because it tastes good, it's inviting. You, you, again, you just have to get over the brain that says, and the programming, I should say, from our culture that says... Fats, especially saturated fats, are bad. That's, yes. that's, that's a hard one to shake yes. from the authorities. Well, one thing I didn't mention, I started early on in my life, I had an eating disorder, uh, uh, bulimia. And, uh, and so at that time I started doing all this low-fat food, you know, because I was totally afraid of calories and fat and all this. It made the bulimia worse. Mm. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I, I believe my health really took a dive uh, 
in my late teens because of this, and I started eating less fat. So that sort of exacerbated the bulimia. So I just wanted to mention that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fear of fat. Get over it. Get over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and look at the fact that our ancestors, we wouldn't be here if our ancestors didn't love the fat. <laughs> we wouldn't be here. That's what, okay. that, that's what all the vegans and ve vegetarians don't get. We wouldn't be here mm -hmm. if it wasn't successful. Yes, you know? and, and, the, and, the, and mm, the longest period in evolution. Over are, two all, million years. years. Yes. With only this little experiment with grains <laughs> being this short little snippet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Would you show us how to make ghee? I will. Okay. Uh, it's so very tell me simple. How we come, what, what are you starting with? Let's oh, just see uh, what a we pound start of with. butter. A pound of butter. Yeah, and that'll last you a while. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just stick it on simmer on the back of the stove while we do some other recipes here. And don't leave the kitchen while you're making it um, because it can burn if you walk away from it. And so, so what temperature well, are you putting it on? Well, sort of medium. And, and we'll get it so it's sort of simmering. And then it'll take about 15 minutes for it to bubble. And then, and then we'll see that it clarifies, it separates. And then we'll strain it with a strainer okay. into okay. the cup. Okay. Well, how about making something, a recipe from your book? Okay, great. Um, well, I picked out, uh, well, since I used to be a caterer and I made a lot of hors d'oeuvres and did a lot of parties, I chose my very favorite uh, dip from the book, Magical Muhammara. Wait a minute. Magical Muhammara. Okay. And the recipe is from Aleppo, Syria. It's very wonderful and spicy. The uh, secret ingredient is pomegranate uh, molasses, ah. uh, which we use a little bit of, but it really adds the, uh, the secret flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I call it the thinking man's hummus. <laughs> yes, it has it has no uh, garbanzo beans. Uh, the base of it is walnuts, toasted okay. walnuts, All right. and then we have uh, roasted red pepper. Now, those those you I you use the make your uh, own jar buy? can. Uh, yeah, if if you want to uh, roast your own peppers and peel them, you can do that. Mm -hmm. But you can use the Mazetta uh, roasted peppers. Those okay. work great. Okay. And what else do we have in here? We have. Uh, Garlic. Boku. And, you know, these are all my favorite flavors. I love garlic. I love cumin. I love lemon. Um, mm. And, uh, well, I like uh, Mexican food for that well, reason, too. Lime, garlic, yep. cumin, you know. So, so that's could, cumin? Uh, this is to uh, okay. toasted cumin. Okay. Uh, tiny bit of salt in there. And uh, this has about a teaspoon of... Uh, crushed red pepper. Uh, mm. You can add mm. more. The nice thing about this recipe is you can tweak it. If you want more cumin, more garlic, or more lemon, uh, you can do that. I need a little bit of a knife here. And uh, lemon juice. And then three or four tablespoons of the um, pomegranate molasses. So that's a sweetener. Uh, yeah, but this has a particularly uh, tang to it, uh, which you will see. And uh, uh, you can get this at Whole Foods or you can order it online. Just want to taste. Just it's, a taste. It's very, it is. It feels like, I mean, totally exotic. Kind it, of. it is. It's very exotic. And uh, these are kind of the flavors mm. I like. I like mm -hmm. um, eth ethnic foods. Well, I saw that in looking through your book. Um, part of what made it exciting to me was I felt like it was a, sort of a, a taste tour around the world, paleo style. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. You can. I mean, there's French influence, and I see the South American and yes. the Mexican and the little uh, bit of Central Asian. Asian. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Well, in a sense, the traditional foods that arose out of the paleo. Yes. Some, many of them. Yes. As you go around the world, each each culture has its special special foods the way they do it, but you can still stay paleo where, wherever you go. What have we got here? Olive oil? Uh, this is olive oil. So I'm just going to turn this on. This is how easy it is. And about a quarter of a cup of olive oil. Yep. And 
that's it. See how easy good. that is? And smells good. Believe me, folks, make this for a party and everybody will rave. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it goes quick. Yep, and you can get some gluten-free, um, grain-free crackers, or you can use it as a vegetable, uh, little vegetable mm -hmm. dip. And the other nice thing about this, you can use it on uh, grilled chicken or fish. It oh, like a, like a kind of marinade or saucer mm -hmm. kind of thing? Mm hmm Mmm. Mm. Like that it. is really nice. Mm -hmm. I taste the what's interesting, I taste the cumin. Mm-hmm. Right. And the peppers. Yeah. But everything else sort of just all Blend, nestles around yeah. it, mm -hmm. blends really yeah. well. It does blend well. And this, mm -hmm. this this pomegranate yeah. molasses, you don't taste it in here. It no. just seems it's a little sort of a tangy tart. Yeah. It ends up this flavor. undercurrent, but uh, yeah. It's, a, it's definitely a special taste that makes the... This could make a nice topping on a, on a salad, too. I yeah. Mean, mm -hmm. I mean... Yeah. Yum. Mm -hmm. Yum. Thank you. Yeah, you can put it on a lot of things. Well, you know, it reminds me that when I looked through your book, I wanted to add that, you know, thinking about who is this book for, right? And I thought, well, it's for people who like... What, what you've done is, is that the flavors on each dish, the several that I've tried... Each dish have some of these distinctive flavors. Not necessarily hard to find. That's what that's what makes this a notch above ordinary. Yeah. You know, the spices or the lime or the um, um, particular uh, herbs that you've added to things. So it feels like that's why this is cuisine. This is not a recipe book. This is cuisine. <laughs> because you have flavors that are memorable and, um, how do I say it, special. Yes. Really special. Well, uh, that's the thing. I looked at a lot of the paleo books out there, and because I have this strong culinary background, uh, I just felt like I wanted to use the word cuisine with paleo because this is a notch up, yes. I believe. Yes. It really yes. makes the paleo uh, diet really special for foodies, for families, whatever. But the, I other, th the other thing that you did is you made it not take forever. I mean, yes. The recipes I the other night I made your salmon salad niçoise, right? Oh so, yeah. Oh, so yeah. that's one of my You know, with some ones. nice flavoring on the salmon as well as the, the dressing, the salad dressing that goes on there. And I made the whole dish, all of it, in a half an hour. That's doable. I yes. Mean, that's not it I is mean, you're doable. not making it for somebody who's going to spend three hours in the kitchen. And that in these days makes I a make, difference. If I can't make dinner in twenty minutes, forget it, you know. I, and actually from being a caterer and everything, I always chose the recipes that were easiest and the most efficient to make. So that's the way I did the cookbook. A lot of people say, Oh, I don't cook. Well, I say assemble. You assemble. Can assemble. Assemble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, this is not the kind of cookbook that says, yeah. and sit here for 20 minutes this is not, stirring this sauce. <laughs> this is not Jul Julia Child. No, it is. I hear, I hear, I hear the yes. butter. Yeah, Indeed. isn't that wonderful? So I don't know whether we can get a little shot of this, but it's, bub it's bubbling it's, like It's breeze. bubbling away and making a little bit of noise, but that's what we want it to do. And in a few minutes, it'll be, it'll be geek. Now, it, do you? But you leave it still at that medium temperature? Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. You can turn it down if you want, but it just sort of hurries it along. The main thing <laughs> is that twenty minutes. You, you don't want to leave the kitchen. I've done that and come back, and it turns really fast, and then you've got burn butter. So uh, uh, yeah. Uh. And what I always do, I I like to actually s uh, save what's at the bottom. You know, uh, and then I use it on steamed vegetables. So it has a little bit of the oh, salty kind of from the butter. Okay. Uh, but don't throw that away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, like the bacon fat. It's good don't stuff. throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway. So what are you looking for? Well, it'll separate. See, uh, the milk solids are going to separate, and some of them are going to sink to the bottom, okay. and some of them we're going to skim off the top. I see. It separates okay. itself. And then what's left in the middle is the golden oil that we call ghee or clarified bitter. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And you can see I have my huge, super-duper-sized <laughs> coconut oil, which actually uh, I, 
I use so much coconut oil in my cooking, and sometimes I mix them. I'll, I'll throw a little mm -hmm. bit of ghee, a mm -hmm. little mm -hmm. bit of coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of that. Just, uh, yeah, do your own thing. With so the, mix and with match the all, of, all yeah. of the oils. Well, mm -hmm. they, they bring yeah. you all the different flavors. All the different flavors, and each oil has a different quality that adds a, a healthy component. All oils are not oh, the same, so right, that's why right. you eat some of them uh, every day, mm -hmm. each one of them. Mm -hmm. So while we wait, while we wait for the ghee, um, I'm going to have another nibble because this is really, this is really good. It is really good, isn't it? Uh, I just love this stuff. I have to put it on. Something. You're going to wish I'll, you were here. I will, getting uh, to taste this. I'll definitely send some home. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So while we're waiting for the ghee, any any last thoughts? Things we haven't talked about about the cuisine or its effect or your recipes. Um, well, I would say the most important thing in, in beginning anything like that, because it's really scary to kind of change your uh, diet, you know, uh, stop eating grains, all that. Just try some recipes. Um, at least eliminate the, the really problem things. The gluten, if you can do it. Um, all processed food, clean out your cupboards, and just begin eating uh, a more natural uh, foods that actually look like food, mm. you know, and haven't been changed into something else. The more natural your food diet is that you can adhere to, uh, the better. So if you can't call it paleo, if you can't actually go totally paleo yet, don't let that stop you from adding some nutritious fat, some good grass-fed meat to your diet, and see what that feels like. I mean, your body will be your guide. I didn't dive in totally all at once. Mm -hmm. It's been a learning curve, mm -hmm. but you know what? As you go along, your body will speak to you like mine did. It said, oh, I'm not depressed anymore. Oh, I don't have hypoglycemia anymore. Oh, I have more energy. You know what? And you're going to notice these things. So. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. I think that to, for a person to, when I think about friends that I've brought this up to, and I think the big hurdle that a lot of them have here is, is that those carb foods are such an important part of their reward system, the yes. personal psychological right. reward. And, and I think the research has shown that, that they're addictive. I mean, the grains actually have very a, addictive. A, a molecular yes. structure very, very, addictive. very similar mm -hmm. to what? Well, yeah. gluteal morphine, that's a, like a morphine-like su substance in the gluten, yes, absolutely. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't want to let go. And I think a lot of friends have the fear that if they let go of the glutens as well as the sugars, there's nothing left. Yeah. And well, I think that's true. You know, we, we say uh, a lot of time in our culture, oh, you know, I'm, I'm going to give myself a treat. I'm going to love myself. I'll, I'll have that carb. I'll have that sugar as a way to love myself. But, you know... Uh, the craving, I believe, comes from a nutrient deficient diet. And our body is going to continue to crave until we give it what it needs. Mm -hmm. And what it needs are nutrients. It needs the right vitamins and minerals in the right combination. It needs the nutritious fats. When you start giving your body what it really needs, which is love, I believe, mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's going to respond. So, Love, love. In physical form, in yeah. art, is yeah. what you're doing. And part of the thing, too, that I really want the book to inspire, and I talk about this, is take your kids to the farmer's market. Show them how to make the dressings and the special yeah. dips. Because yeah. part of all of this is about connection. It's about family connection, connection with friends. Our mm -hmm. culture has gotten away from cooking. And to me, it's an, the missing thing, mm. you know, mm. the cooking mm. and the love that goes into the mm. cooking, the picking out of the foods, and the sharing. And so. the beauty of it. I want and to add that. And the beauty of it. Uh, that absolutely. Is, oh. You know, it is. The pictures, uh, the pictures in your book share that. It's like, it's like oh, that looks beautiful. I mean, I've, beautiful presentation. I've with always it. loved food. Uh, I've I love catering, I love the presentation, I love the beautiful food, going to the farmer's market, all of it. It was all one huge, mm -hmm. you know, uh, thing for me. It's been a wonderful life, food.
<laughs> it has fed you yes. and it has brought that love. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's true. So here we go. Uh, oh, is boy. Is it there yet? I would say it's almost there. Uh, so, yeah. So now what we can see, yeah, it's clearing up. And I'm going to turn it off. And it'll sit there for a few minutes and continue to clear. And then we'll just strain it into a cup. How, okay. e how easy is that? Gosh. A lot of people say, oh, God, I've never made it. I don't know how to make it. I show how to make it in my cooking class, and that's everybody's favorite class, the class on the fats, how to make mayonnaise and how to make ghee. Well, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out how to do, well, we've learned one of the two. <laughs> yeah. So in about a couple minutes, okay. that'll be ready to just strain okay. into the jar. And then here's my jar that I, it's almost gone now, mm -hmm. that I keep right mm -hmm. here. You just add it on top? Yeah. Just stays there. It, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. How long? How how long? That, so it's stable. I mean, that's part of totally what it's totally stable. It won't uh, go rancid. Uh, I'll make a couple of jars. I'll keep one in the fridge, but that one just sits out until I use it for weeks. Well, yeah. knowing you, it's probably yeah, well, not going to take too yeah, long to couple, use that. A couple of weeks, maybe. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is just at the point where. You can see the it started to brown on the bottom of the pan. It's really clear, clear liquid. That's what you want. And then once it gets to that that stage, uh, what we do is we just pour it through a strainer, and that filters out the rest of the little residue on the top there. And then I let it sit for a while, and some of that stuff sinks to the bottom, and then I just pour it into a little mason jar. Yeah. There you go. That is easy. Isn't it? I think it is too. So, See, it's all clear now. It's all clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. And you know what? It's so delicious. So. Thank you. Yeah. This has been wonderful. Yes, Thank you for really the, the treats, the food, the butter, the conversation. <laughs> yeah. You're watching Pete Millman, and I'm with Polly Halstead, who is Paleo Polly. <laughs> Paleo Polly. <laughs> Author of Primal Cuisine. What's the rest of it? Cooking for the Paleo Diet. There you go. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.